Let's begin learning about areas of parallelograms and triangles. This is our content standard and these are the mathematical practices for our assignment today. Previously you found areas of rectangles and squares and now we're going to find perimeters and areas of parallelograms and find perimeters and areas of triangles. We have four new vocabulary words, base of a parallelogram, height of a parallelogram, base of a triangle, and height of a triangle. Previously, you learned that a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel, as marked here. Any side of a parallelogram can be called the base of a parallelogram, and the height of a parallelogram is the perpendicular distance between any two parallel bases. You can use postulate 11.1 to develop the formula for the area of a parallelogram. It states, the area of a region is the sum of the areas of its non-overlapping parts. In these figures, a right triangle is cut off from one side of a parallelogram and it's translated to the other side. It, as, it, as is shown, it forms a rectangle with the same base and height. That's why we can state the area of a parallelogram is the product of a base and its corresponding height. Let's look at this in practice. I would suggest that you draw this figure so as we're working the problem, then you have uh, something to go back and look at because it's going to vanish in a moment. <clears throat> We have this base of 32, this base is 20, and this portion of this right triangle is 12 inches. So since opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent, we know that RS is congruent to UT and that RU is congruent to ST. So UT is 32 and ST is 20. The perimeter, if you add all those up, 104 inches. Find the height of the parallelogram. Well, we, the height forms a right triangle with points S and T. The base is 12. The hypotenuse is 20. So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem and substitute in. Where the hypotenuse is 20, one of the sides is 12. Now let's solve for the second side. <clears throat> Since length has to be positive, we're only going to use the positive uh, solution to this one, which is 16. So the height is 16 inches. UT is the base, which measures 32, so the area of a par parallelogram is the base times the height, or 32 times 16, or 512 inches squared. So the perimeter is 104 inches, and the area is 512 inches squared. Okay, time for you to check this on your own. So pause the video and find the perimeter and the area of this parallelogram, and then come back and check your answer. Well, we know the perimeter, if this side is 17, so is this one. And if this side is 27, this entire length of segment DG is also 27. Add those together, you get 88 meters. Use the Pythagorean theorem. 8 squared plus B squared is equal to 17 squared. And solve for B, and you get 15. Now, the area is the base of 27 times that height that you found of 15 which is 405 meters squared. Now you may need to use trigonometry to find the area of a parallelogram and again I would suggest that you draw this figure in your notes so as we're solving it you have something to go back and look at. Notice we have a 45 degree angle. We've got a base of 12 so we know this is 12 and this side is 9 so we know that this is also 9. Well, we're going to use a 45, 45, 90 triangle to find the height. Now we know this hypotenuse, it measures 9. And we also know that the measure of the, this hypotenuse is the leg times the square root of 2. So because we know that from trigonometry, we know that the measure of the hypotenuse 
is h square root of 2, which is equal to 9. So now let's solve for h so we can find the measure of that leg. It's approximately equal to 6 and 36 hundredths. To find the area, we know that base was 12, we've got our height, and we do the multiplication. So the area is approximately equal to 76 and 3 tenths square units. Remember that the perimeter is measured in linear, linear units such as inches and centimeters and area is measured in square units such as square feet and square millimeters. So time to check your progress. So pause the video and find the area of this and then come back and check your answer. Well, you know that this hypotenuse is 12 centimeters. We also know that it is also equal to the leg, or in this case the height, times the square root of 2. So if we take 12, divide it by the square root of 2, it's approximately equal to 848 hundredths. Multiply that by 16, we get 135 and 76 hundred centimeters squared. Like the base of a parallelogram, the base of a triangle can be any side. The height of a triangle is the length of an altitude drawn to a given base. So from the, any of the vertexes forming a perpendicular line to any of the bases, that would be the height. You can use postulate 11.2 to develop the formula for the area of a triangle. And this states if two figures are congruent, then they have the same area. In these figures, a parallelogram is cut in half along a diagonal to form two congruent triangles with the same base and height. By the area congruence postulate, the two congruent triangles have the same area, so one triangle with base B and height H has half the area of a parallelogram with base B and height H. That's how we get this key concept. The area of a triangle is one half the product of a base and its corresponding height. Okay, we've got a real world example. You need to buy enough boards to make the frame of the triangular sandbox shown and enough sand to fill it. If one board is three feet long, and one bag of sand fills nine square feet of the sandbox, how many boards and bags do you need to buy? Again, I would suggest you draw this figure before you move forward so that you can have some example to go back as we're working the problem. So we find the perimeter of the sandbox. We simply add the measures of all three sides to get 35 and 5 tenths feet. To find the area of the sandbox, we know that the area of a triangle is one half its base times height. The base is 12, the height is 9, so we get 54 feet squared. Now we're going to use unit analysis to determine how many of each item are needed. We, got, we need 35 and a half feet, and every board is 3 feet long. So we multiply 35.5 times 1, then divide that by 3 to get 11.83. So we know we're going to need 12 boards to get this much. The sand, we need 54 squared feet. One bag gives us 9 square feet. So 54 times 1 divided by 9 will give us an even 6 bags of sand. So because we have to round up the number of boards to get enough, you'll need 12 boards and 6 bags of sand. Here's the opportunity to check your uh, understanding. So pause the video and work this problem and come back and check your answer. Well, we know the perimeter is 20 plus 9 plus 16, which is 45. And if we take 45 and divide it by 4, we get 11.25, we have to round it up to 12 boards. The area is one half of this base of 16 times 12. 
which gives us 94 square feet. 94 divided by 7 gives us 13 and 71 hundredths. So we round it up to 14 bags of mulch we need to buy. Now you can use algebra to solve for unknown measures in parallelograms and triangles. We're given that the height of a triangle is 7 inches more than its base. The area of the triangle is 60 square inches. Find the base and height. So first of all, let's write an expression to represent each measure. If we let B stand for the base, we know the height is 7 more than the base. And use the formula for the area of the triangle to find B. Now let's substitute in. Area is one half of the base times the height, and we know the height is 7 more than the base. Let's get rid of this fraction by multiplying both sides by 2. Then we distribute the B across the parentheses. Let's subtract 120 for both sides and factor. So the factors of 120, that their difference is a positive 7, would be 15 and 8. Set them both equal to 0 using the zero product property. And we know that b is equal to 8 and negative 15. Can't have a negative measure, so we're going to use 8 as our measure that we're going to use for our base. 8 plus 7 is 15, so that will give us our height of 15 inches. Okay, here's your last check, your progress. So using the work from the previous example, find the base and the height, and then come back and check your answer. Well, we know that the height is the base plus 12, and our area is 560. So I set up my equation 560 is equal to 1 half times b times b plus 12. I end up with the um, quadratic equation b squared plus 12b minus 1120 is equal to 0. The factors of 1120 that uh, their difference is 12 is a positive 40 and a negative minus 28. When I solve for um, b, I get a negative 40 and a positive 28. So 28 plus 12 will give us 40 inches. Very good. You're ready to begin working on the assignment.